welcome to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham and to the first of our quarterfinals. Well, things are really hotting up now because we're now down to 16 contenders from the 32 originally chosen. That's right, we're getting down to the best of the best and I'm not surprised because everybody wants to get their hands on those fantastic prizes. And each of our champions will walk away with £5,000. <laughs> A holiday at the Atlantis Complex on Paradise Island in the Bahamas. <laughs> and a four-wheel drive off-the-road family vehicle. And the runners-up, well, they don't go away empty hand either, because they also get £2,000 cash. So let's meet our quarter-finalists, Janet Allen. And Tracy Fulford. So you're looking very relaxed. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. I just hope that I can win again, basically. Come up with the goods. That's right. Remind everybody what you do and where you're from. I'm a sports development officer and I'm from Bristol. And you're... A <laughs> few people from Bristol there. And your main sport, of course, is bodybuilding. Does that come in handy at all in the heat? Um, it does strength-wise, um, yeah. most definitely. Now, have you learned any lessons from the heats that you might be able to implement now once you're in the quarterfinals? Um, I think more on the thinking line. Um, last time I just went out for it, but this time I think I need to think a lot more on what I'm doing. Well, go away and psych yourself up. Janet Allen. Okay, Tracy, how are you feeling? Are you feeling nervous? Yeah, really nervous. Terrible. Well, it's your second time on the show. I thought it would be getting a little bit easier. Well, doesn't it get worse every time you come out? <laughs> and how do you think you're going to do today? Well, just try my best. That's all I can do. Well, it was good enough last time. Yeah. Remind us again, what do you do for a living? I'm a mother of four children, and they're all in the audience there. OK. <laughs> Put yourself all psyched up, prepared, ready to go? Trying to get there, trying. <laughs> OK, off you go. Get yourself ready. It's here for Tracy. <laughs> Quarterfinalists, they are Phil Ennis and Brian Richardson. <laughs> now you have to remind us again what you do and where you're from. Oh, I'm sell advertising. I'm from London and I work for Thompson's Directories. Oh, and I'm sure everybody will remember this man as the man of 11 children. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, a smallish to large family. Yes. <laughs> have they been keeping you busy since we saw you last? Um, yeah, I've been inundating requests to uh, sort of do things with the gladiators and all sorts of other things. Well, I bet you have. Now, I was just thinking, the first time we met, you reminded me of someone. I thought to myself, I know this man. I'm sure I've met him in the past. Ladies and gentlemen, would you not agree this man looks like Ian Wright? <laughs> See, they agree. Well, it's, I, I'm glad to be here because when I'm on the pitch, people used to say I looked a bit like John. So at least I can put that to rest. <laughs> John Fashion, oh, well, as long as you perform better than him, that's all we want. Oh, well, he's a nice man to live up to, I'll try. <laughs> oh, what a nice thing to say. Phil Ennis, we'll look out for you. Now, Brian, there's been quite a break since the last show. What have you been doing to keep yourself fit? Um, I've been uh, really concentrating on, uh, on my training programme. I've been doing uh, five minutes a day now, uh, so I've upped it quite a bit. Um, so I'm feeling very, very strong indeed. Ready for today? Oh, absolutely. It's going to be another close one, John. Tell us again, so everybody remembers, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm in the Royal Navy. I'm a Chief Pet Officer Physical Trainer. Are uh, they all in the audience watching you? Uh, most of them are. I think half the Navy's here, actually. Well, I know they're all supporting you. Off you go, Brian. Get yourself ready. Let's hear Brian Richardson. So let's kick off this first quarterfinal with our first event. And using the blue balls is a Tracy! And using the red is a Janice! And guarding those five baskets are our gladiators, Amazon, Vogue and Jet! Three very good reasons to stick around for the next 50 minutes of nail-biting action. Over to John Anderson. Let it go! 
all bubble, toil and trouble, and do they mean business tonight? Play ball. Tracy against Amazon, straight off the mark. Janet against Vogue, throws her out of bounds and slam dunks it for three. Tracy on jet scores again. Janet slips Amazon. Two points. Tracy reloads, facing Amazon. Checks her this time. Vogue running on Janet, out of bounds. Past the glads, getting to grips with these girls. Tracy again. Oh, Jet's there, denies her. Janet sprints through to dunk home the points. Reloads. Vogue in her face and on her case. Amazon splashed down with Tracy. Here's Janet. Amazon marking up and taking down. Heavy ball. Tracy gets got her measure. Janet's down, looks to be winded. But she drags herself back into it. Tracy against Vogue. Vogue the victor. Janet again. Running out of time here. That's it. Well, the contenders came on like a couple of whirlwinds, with most of the points being whipped up in the opening 10 seconds. Look at Tracy's skill and agility. Tracy, that was hard work. Certainly, it's a hard game. Does it get any easier? It doesn't get any easier. It's a really hard game. It's fast. Well done. You got yourself four points. <laughs> Janet. Wow. You were having a good time there. Did you get a little knock? I thought you got winded there, did you? Yeah, just a little bit, I'm right. Well done, you were trying to go for the middle basket, weren't you, this time? I certainly was, yeah, I'm thinking today. Well done, seven points! <laughs> An explosive opening event for both girls, after which Janet's on seven, Tracy's on four. So, let's move on to the men. And using the blue balls is Brian! <laughs> and using the red, it's Phil! is our heavyweight gladiators, Rhino, Warrior and Raider! It's the Wrecking Crew, 60 stone of bad news. And Phil's done this before, he knows what's ahead. Um, initially, my very first game was Powerball, so my first introduction was to Warrior, and he um, took my left arm out which um, is quite useful when you're trying to do two, two arm games. <laughs> it's nice to have two arms, but he took one out. and so That was a, a nice introduction to the heaviest member of the team. Let's wish him well. Contenders, ready! Contenders, <laughs> ready! Yeah. Mad, bad and dangerous to know, but I'm not saying which one is which. Tackle. Brian, oh, that's his first ever taste of Powerball. John Anderson rebukes the Gladiators. Phil reloads, goes high, cut down by Warrior. Brian straight into Raider. Wrestle down. Phil. Rhino's there. Unlucky with the lob. Brian against Warrior. Warrior wins it. Pushes him wide. Phil pulled into reverse by Raider. Brian, there's Warrior and Rhino getting a piece. Phil again. Gets a face full of Rhino, grounds the ball. Here's Brian. Warrior having a great power ball, and Phil tripped in the tangle. For the contenders, this is fast, furious, and fruitless. Both reload. Phil again denied by Warrior, and Raider dancing Brian to the deck. Phil again. Oh, everywhere he goes, there's Warrior. Brian needn't rush, we're out of time. Excellent gladiator performance, both contenders shattered and battered. What did you do at work today, Daddy? Here's Fash. Come on up, Ryan. You done well. Quarterfinals, you knew it was going to get tougher and tougher. Big lads, hit hard. Oh, I need a massage. Is there any way through? I think there is, but uh, I've not found it today. You certainly haven't. Unlucky. No points, Brian. Phil. You were crazy at the end. You were actually trying to get through Warrior and Rhino at the same time. What were you thinking of? Oh, I think they just... Oh, what was I, I don't know what I was thinking of. They just hit you so hard. You just got to go for it. Any injuries? No, nothing that I can't shake off. 
Well, good news, there's plenty to go, a long way to go. No points, it's here for Phil. Great effort, rewarded with bumps and bruises, but no points. Scores after the first event, nil-nil. Next up. And standing at the foot of the wall, it's Tracy. She's going to be chased by Jet. Chased by lightning. Earlier, Janet told us she was quietly confident about this event. I think the war is going to be um, my strongest one. Uh, the first show, I just zoomed up there. I don't know how I managed to get up there, but I was up there. And I've got the wall again, so um, I'm fairly confident with that game. Ah, but last time she wasn't against lightning. Contenders! You will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. First up, ten, second up, five. Oh, Janet with a terrible start. Can't even get on the wall, let alone up it. Well, she's climbing now, but Tracy's got a good head start. Here come the Gladiators. And Lightning only a fingertip away. But Janet crabs right, takes a transverse route. And Jet clawing back Tracy's lead. Lightning storming up, looking to overtake Janet. Reaches across, grabs a knee, and Jet snaps at Tracy's heels. Tracy inches from the summit, and Jet hanging on by a fingernail. Lightning's got a grip, working for the strip, the clock going down. The girl's not trying to harness her in. What a battle. Even the Berlin Wall came down easier than this. Yes, a synchronized strip down. Frustration from Janet's brother, Elkin. He knows that start let his sister down. Janet raced to the wall, lost her hand grip, and most of that head start against Lightning. Well, Janet, I suppose it was inevitable after that disastrous start. Oh, God, I don't know. What happened? I just slipped. Didn't get the grip, and I just slipped. But at one stage, I actually thought you were going to get away from her, but um, perhaps took a more difficult and more complicated way up the wall. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's the route that I've planned, so I kept to that route. Once I slipped, I've just lost the time to, to get up there. But there you go. Well, you had to hang on fairly tight for quite a while, Lightning. Yeah, I know Janet's a very, very eager and determined lady. I also know that she's as fast as Lightning on this wall. So I said to her, just watch you don't slip. Because I thought that's the only way I'm going to get her. And that was the kiss of death. <laughs> How very nice. And Tracy, I remember in the heats, you hung on to the end and picked up five points. No such luck this time. No, no such luck. I thought it was going to be a double leg. I thought we were going to do it at the same show again. But, oh, I can tell you, when she grabbed me harness, I wouldn't be able to hang on. She had to keep a hold of me foot. <laughs> and you, in fact, got hold of her eventually, didn't you, Jet? I did. I was quite close to you at the bottom, but I thought, no, 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 I'll see if I can get further up, further up the wall. And I did a really bad climb and nearly fell off. And then I was so thankful when I actually finally got to you again. And once I'd got the harness, you're right. It's a very strong grip for us, but you did a very good climb. Oh, well, never mind. Let's hear for Tracy, Janet, and our two gladiators, Jet and Lightning. Great job on the wall, girls. After two events, Janet stays on seven, Tracy on four. So we now move into the men's event with Brian. And he's going to be chased by Trojan. Also raring to go, it's Phil. He's going to be chased by Hunter. Over to John Anderson. Contenders, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. So it's up, up, and away. Brian in blue, Phil in red. Both climbing well. Ah, oh, but here comes trouble. Hunter, fast becoming famous for the quick finish. Oh, comes away, but without his man, slips through his fingers. Trojan tracking Brian. Brian's wife, Julie, giving him more abuse than encouragement there. Oh, look at Hunter on the left. Gets a second fight in the cherry and makes no mistake this time. Incredible recovery from Hunter. And Trojan polishes Brian off before he can get a leg over. Terrific action. And Julie's wrecked as well. well last time you were chased by Hunter and he got you, and this time he almost didn't. Yeah. Were you aware of what was going on? No, I just felt him on my ankle, carried on climbing. And in fact, Hunter, you were rather furious there because, of course, you <laughs> didn't get a chance, a second chance to get up there. Well, yeah, I fell off and I, I couldn't touch the ground, but the guy let me down 
and uh, I managed to get back up there pretty quick. Well, well done, and I'm afraid for you. No oh, points no. this time. <laughs> Never mind, Phil. And Brian, it didn't matter. Last time you were chased by Cobra, we now changed the gladiator. It makes absolutely no difference. Is it a wall too far, I wonder? Oh, that was all. He was like Grease Lightning again, up like a rat out of a viaduct. He was smoking, he was, yeah. Smoking. You certainly were. You did a terrific job there, Trojan. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's going well. It's a uh, first good catch on the wall. It's a good feeling when you do catch up with them. It's not, it's not a good feeling. It is not a good feeling when you catch up it's with them. It's a great feeling when you catch up with them. Well, mate. Uh... Well, it was great action. Let's hear it for Brian, for Phil, for our two gladiators, Trojan and for Hunter. As the guys set off for the locker room, let's look at the scores after two events. Phil and Brian still nil-nil. So still to come, Danger Zone, Pendulum and Joust. Don't go away. Join us after the break here on Gladiators. We're just about to kick off with event number three. First up in the danger zone, it's Janet! And she's going to be facing Nightshade! Over to John Anderson. See Nightshade back in the arena, given the all clear after that nasty accident on tilt last week. Here we go. Janet's first excursion into the danger zone. A point for every weapon fired, ten for hitting the target above Nightshade. Crossbow off target. As you saw, the station self destruct ten seconds after firing. Bazooka next. Still to get her range. Nightshade pinning her down there. Now she's across. Rocket launcher, up a bit, down a bit, oh, just high and right, breaks for cover. Ball hits her on the ankle, but it must have been a rebound or we would have heard the whistle. It's the mortar, last chance for a maximum ten, low and left there, now she's got a sprint for the five points through the tunnel to punch the lower targets. She's made it! Excellent danger zone for Janet, here she comes, lights it for five points, and brother Elkin happier with that. Kept on going, dodging, diving. It's a fast game, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is very fast. And she was pretty good. She was fairly close to you as well a couple of times. She certainly was, but she missed. <laughs> well, you picked up five points. Well done, Janet! Well done indeed. Five points safely in the bank. Next up against Nightshade, it's Tracy! Over to John Anderson. Shade's impression of Piers Brosnan, although she needs to have more of a golden eye for this run because here comes Tracy. And like Janet, it's also her first expedition into the firing line. Onto the crossbow. You don't want to fiddle about with that bolt. Oh, I knew that would happen. The bolt's meant to end up a few feet from the target rather than a few feet from the firer. Bazooka fires, overcooks the elevation, breaks right for the rocket launcher. That missile could do with a tracking device to keep it on target. Lost it again. Last chance for the 10. It's the mortar. Oh, shoots for the stars again. So now it's Brave the Barrage on the break through the tunnel. And she's good for five. Lights up the lower target. And her son's delighted with Mum's performance. Oh, Tracy, aiming a little bit high there a couple of times. Yeah, I certainly did. I knew in practice I said get it high, but that was too high. Well, listen, you'll be pleased to know you picked up five points. Well done, Tracy. So that fast footwork from the girls shoots up their scores by five apiece. It's 12-9 after three. So now we move into the men's danger zone with Phil. And he's going to be facing the Wolfman. And who's going to argue with that? Well, they would. At least that stuff improves his looks. Three, two, one. Phil rightly spots. 
sprints into the shooting gallery. Wolf preys on sitting ducks. Phil to the crossbow. Wolf rattles his windshield. Oh, Phil fires the string and leaves the ball to the bow. That's worse than Tracy. Great recover. Good shot from Wolf there, by the way. Here's the bazooka. Shoots up and over. And shoots to the rocket launcher. Ah, oh, Phil jumps. Must have been a spider on the carpet. Up the rocket launcher. Oh, unlucky. Hit the outer rim there. Back into no man's land for the dash to the mortar. Oh, and there's fireworks. The referee stopped it. Well, it didn't look to me as if that rocket was on target, but Uli's got a better view than anyone down there. How did she see it? That looked like a terrific game of Danger Zone. Did you enjoy it? Oh, very much so. Very quick. It was very fast indeed. In fact, you had a little bit of trouble on the first station. Yeah, I just couldn't get it to work. I don't know what went wrong. Well, it looked to me as if you picked up 10 points. Well, that's good. It's time we'll play. <laughs> John Anderson. Yes, I hate to oh. be the bearer of bad news, but unfortunately, we just wanted to confirm it. Bill, I'm sorry, but you were hit between stations one and two, and I'm afraid you only have one point. Oh, Phil. Did you feel it? Um, it's, when you're moving that fast, you, got, you keep going. It could be a ricochet. You just keep going. Well, that's what we wanted to check out to make sure, but unfortunately, it's only one point. Good news is another couple of events. Let's hear it for Phil. Well, Phil denied the points and Wolf almost denied the credit. Oh, Phil giving the Wolf some stick. That's a bit silly. If he can hit a moving target, Phil, he certainly won't miss a standing one. Oh, John Anderson's not going to like this. Someone tell him there's no apostrophe in Wicked. The ref rebukes the Wolf and they love it. Next up to face the Wolf man. Sharp shooter, Brian. Oh, Ooh, careful where you put your gun. Contender, ready! Navy man Brian has come under fire a few times in the course of his job. But never from anyone dressed up like that. Brian into the danger zone. Oh, he's hit! The sniper with a smile has picked him up and he goes down like an Italian footballer. Caught him amidships and he's sunk and Brian's dad, Dennis, can't believe it. Less than five seconds. Brian, Brian, the word, the word pathetic springs to mind. A lovely shot. You got me. It was over before it had begun. Oh, I know. The hardest thing about this is running across there with a box in your shorts. Perhaps I should have put it in the front, shouldn't I? Oh, <laughs> say no more. Let's hear for Brian. Another couple of events. <laughs> Not sure I know what they're talking about. Let's hear it for our gladiator, Wolfman! Oh, and Wolf takes his hat off to Brian, literally. He almost kept a clean sheet up there. After three events, Phil's finally off the mark, with Brian still to score. On to event four. And the first up on her bike, it's Janet! And she's going to be doing battle against the Panther! Joust a test of balance as well as firepower and looking at Janet's weights and measures low in the saddle at 5'4 with 130 pounds at her disposal which means the Panther will have an extra two inches in height coupled with a six pound weight advantage. Three, two, one. 30 seconds of straddling and striking for the Sky Bikers. Ten points for a knockout, five for going the distance and Panther a real sister sledgehammer laying into Janet with her combat club. As round the houses they go. Panther straight back to work. Janet covering up, looking to hold on for the draw. Panther coming around with a backhander there. Janet coming back two fisted. But she's pulled the draw. She's happy, and the family are happy with that result. And Janet preferring Terra Firma to Terra Panther. Here she comes for a chat with the Fash. Well done, Janet. You didn't look too comfortable up there. I was just giving me a lot of hard um, hits there. I just managed to stay on. Did it seem like a long time up there? Yeah, it certainly did, yes. Well done. You stayed on and got your points. Well done. Let's hear it for Janet. <laughs> Janet's dad and mum moved off and fade, leading the applause. Welcome, a little girl. You're not so bad yourself, Panther. And next up to do battle, it's Tracy! <laughs> She's going to be facing a falcon. 
Tracy, a mother of four, and looking at her stats, more powerfully built than Janet at 5'6 and 140. But the Falcon looks to have the edge height-wise and in the weight department. Three, two, one! Engine started, both girls getting the work straight from the whistle, mostly headshots. Maintain their balance by using their knees. Round the houses. Oh, and Falcon first to connect. Well, a lot of ladies go clubbing on a Saturday night, but not quite like this. Falcon thudding home her shots. Round they go again. This one's literally about give and take. Both girls get shots in. They know the time's running down. Holding on. Oh, there's the final whistle. Despite that piece of lemon in her mouth, she pulled a good five points. Both girls know they've been in a battle. There's her partner, Danny, with her son, Connor. As Tracy exits through the back door, did very well, given the Falcon's superior firepower. Fashman's down there. Well done, Tracy. A little bit more action up there, wasn't there? A little bit more excitement. Yeah, well, just don't let people start hitting us. I've got to hit the back. Oh, yeah, you were giving as much as you were getting. Don't worry about that. You stayed on, yeah, done well. Well, not coming off. Like Janet, got yourself five points. Well done. Let's hit for Tracy! Falcon, exciting stuff. That was more like it. Yeah, she gave me some hard blows. I gave her some hard blows back. Uh, very good match. I enjoyed that. Um, didn't get her off, but well done to you. Well done. Let's hit for Falcon! Well, the girls add five apiece to their scores. Janet 17, Tracy 14 after four. And the first of our male contenders to ride the bike is Phil! And he's up against a real heavyweight. It's a rhino! Yes, it looks like Phil might have his work cut out up there. Superb physique, 5'11", and tipping the scales at over 12 stones, but compared to the raging rhinoceros, he finds himself at five stone disadvantage. Three, two, one! Ah, but the bigger they come, the harder they fall. Rhino almost a little previous there, but Phil stung into action, going for the head and body. And although Rhino has more power in his body, he does have a greater bulk to balance. Round the houses for a nice view of the arena. Phil's first to make contact, gets in a couple before the Rhino can respond. Rhino's struggling with his balance. Oh, and round we go again. Rhino looks to be winding up for the big one. Again, Phil beats him to the blow with that combat club, and John Anderson beats them both with a blow on the whistle. And Rhino generously a proclaiming Phil. Phil's fans love it. Phil dismounts, delighted with five points. He's given everything, and after that bash is Fash. Well done, Phil. That's what we want to see. Now, that was an even battle. I love it. It's nice to mix it with an immovable object, even if you're standing or, or sitting on one that does. Tell me, do any of those blows, do they actually hurt you at all? Well, my brain cells say, yeah. My attitude says no. Well done, you stayed on and got yourself five valuable points. Well done, Phil. Rhino, you took a few, you gave out a lot as well. Um, yeah, I gave him some good hits. He took them, took them well, that's what we like. Were you surprised that he was taking all your shots? Um, no, he's a strong lad and he's game and that's what us gladiators want. Lovely. Thanks very much, Rhino! <laughs> and that battle impressed everyone. Well, almost. See what happens when your mum reads to you from Wolf's Book of Wisdom. And the last of our male contenders to joust, it's Brian! <laughs> and he's going to be facing Raider! <laughs> Over to John Anderson. And Brian not looking comfortable up there. Earlier today, he told us why. Uh, I'm not really looking forward to joust. Um, it's hard work staying on the bikes. They really do flip you about. I don't know if you've ever done one of those bucking bronco uh, things at the fair. It's exactly the same as that. It's hard work to stay on. And you've got somebody trying to club you off. So it's, that is another which I'm not particularly looking forward to. Contender ready! Ready to ready! Three, two, one! Our Navy man more to a rolling boat than a bucking bike. Getting some shots in, parrying with his spare hand. Looks to be an effective defensive technique. Round.
On they go. Two of the best seats in the house, but few would fancy changing places. Brian, first strike on this exchange. A chief petty officer in the Royal Navy, and nothing petty about this performance. Matching Raider blow for blow. It looks like Raider won't be unseating Brian this time. He's just like his new aircraft carrier posting. Invincible. Well, Brian, very glad to see five points and the back of that sky bike. And all four gladiators failing to unseat our contenders. It's downstairs with the fast man. Well, Brian, I think you know how much power the Raider's got in his arms now, don't you? Strong man. Very He's a strong very man. powerful man. Yeah, trying to keep on those, those horses is hard work anyway, with the manoeuvring and the, and the work, but with him trying to club you as well. Surely you were getting near the point where you've said, I've had enough of this. No, never ever give in, John. I like that. Good. I like that. Well done. Five points. Let's hear it, Brian. <laughs> Raider, got a lot of power in those arms there. Yeah, but well, we've got a big contender there. Got a lot of heart, stayed up there. Take my hat off to him. Did he hurt you at all? I mean, sometimes he looked like he got a few good blows in. Yeah, he did, but I take him, I give him back. No worries on my heart. Well done. Let's hear it for Raider! Oh, careful, Raider, you'll have someone's eye out. After four events, Phil's on six, Brian off the mark with five. First up on the pendulum, it's Janet. And she's going to be swinging it out against Zodia. We predicted she'd be a star in this event, and she's proved us right. Zodiac, they don't come more heavenly. Taller than her opponent and marginally heavier. Should be a good chase as they prime the pendulum. and the pendulum is swinging. Janet will score five for staying on the pendulum for 40 seconds and 10 for the full minute. Zodiac will be looking to snatch the flag from Janet's back. And already, Zodiac proving why she's one of the queens of the ball. Backing down onto Janet. Janet retreating, desperately fighting gravity. And Janet looks to have run out of ideas and places to hide. And the family look overjoyed as Zodiac flags her down. And while they're enjoying the ride, let's enjoy the replay. Zodiac is just such a fast globetrotter. She has the measure of Janet in a nanosecond. Yet again, another clean sheet for Zodiac. Here comes Janet, back down to earth. Janet, that was a great shame because, of course, the first time you were on the pendulum, you managed to pick up five points. What went wrong? Um, well, I tried a new tactic by going under, but she's brilliant. She came with me, she found me straight away. She's very, very fast indeed. Some terrific work there by you, Zodiac. Janet and I are actually used to this game together now. We actually have been up there before. Um, I knew that she would try and go down below the ball, so I just went round as quickly as I could. She knew your moves. Let's hear it for Janet and for Zodiac. Yes, a big hand for both girls. Oh, especially from Janet's mum. Next up, it's Tracy. And here's what our Tracy had to say about this little event. The main game that I'm not looking forward to is Pendulum. Um, I haven't actually been on it when it's moving. And it just looks terrifying when you're watching it. So I'm not looking forward to that at all. Just not at all. I'd be terrified. I think I don't think I'll be able to move actually when I get on it. <laughs> well, she's all smiles at the moment and she'll be fine. You don't get to this stage on Gladiators by being a quitter. Three, two, one! Falcon sets off looking to swoop round and use her talents to snatch the flag on Tracy's back. Tracy looking good, gaining height. Oh, but the flying Falcon's found her. Falcon with breathtaking speed. She's on her, and she's got her. And it only took 15 seconds. Awesome on the orb. Spectacular on the sphere. And as Tracy bails out, let's see that again. Falcon doesn't put a foot or a hand wrong for that example of global domination. 
and the pendulum won't let her escape completely. It's still got her shoe. Well, Tracy, <laughs> she's complaining she's lost her shoe. Well, listen, this was the first time you were competing on pendulum, and I'm afraid it showed. Oh, yes, definitely did. I haven't been on it when it's moving, but the tell is that you can't feel it when it's moving. I certainly, you can't really, like... She was around there fairly quickly. She certainly was. I, I made a mistake. I thought, oh, well, instead of staying where I am, I'll move. I moved towards her. Well, it's very difficult to know what to do. And I mean, you were quick, quick in there, Falcon. It was so lovely to see this. <laughs> um, and to be able to touch it. That's right. I really enjoyed that game. I was looking forward to doing it. But as I said, I was really pleased to pull this off. Well, let's hear it for Falcon and for Tracy. So after five events in the ladies' competition, Janet stays on 17 and Tracy on 14. So we now move into the men's pendulum with Phil. Hunter. Hunter rapidly becoming an expert at every event. Pendulum, no exception. He's four inches taller than Phil and over 66 pounds heavier. I'll name that tune in one, Lionel. Three, two. Phil's first decision, which direction will the hunter attack from? Scored five points last time on the pendulum, and Phil deciding to descend. Oh, yes, the right decision, but is he fast enough? The huntsman has him in his sights. Phil grabbing right. Phil fighting the swing. Oh, yes, and hunter accepts his flag of surrender. Great pendulum performance from the hunter. And Phil's out of there. I knew that music would wake the baby. Last time you were up there, you picked up five points. Well, last time I didn't have a bad hand, but I wanted him again. I thought I'd try him again. Did you have a game plan? Oh, yeah, to get away from him. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. But you went in the wrong direction because um, there he was all of a sudden. Well, he was underneath me. I didn't know what to do, so I just dropped down, went upside down and managed to find this uh, little present here. Well, how very nice. Not so nice for you, Phil, still. The eliminator to come. Yeah. Let's hear it for Hunter and for Phil. Next up, it's Brian. And he's going to be facing Cobra. King Cobra looking to snake his way round the pendulum. And he's got a good large target to aim for because Brian stands nearly six feet tall and weighs 14 stones. The Cobra has an extra inch in height at his disposal and a couple of extra pounds. told the jungle Three. version of that will be released Two. soon. One. The chief petty officer and physical training instructor will be looking to keep his ensign flying at all costs on this event, but my goodness, the gladiators are fast tonight. Cobra over the horizon at a rate of knots and Brian down in the doldrums. Oh, and snags in the fishing nets. Julie left catching flies there. And the relentless reptile really is enjoying a tremendous season of gladiators, forcing Brian to leap overboard. Oh, Brian, what a shame. It's the first, first time you've had a proper go at Pendulum, yes. and um, you slipped. I know, it's a, it's a toughie. I thought I'd try and go the, uh, the hard way by going underneath, but, oh, it's a, a tough one. Give us some insight to what it's like. Standing down here, it looks as if you're really swaying at quite a speed. It, it is. You do feel that, that speed on it. It's just an awesome game. The sound and uh, just the movement of it. And of course, when you've got the fast boy on your back. Well, you made a great challenge there and you were getting very close to him. And then unfortunately he slipped. Yeah, this is the best game in this huge fun ground and I was a bit disappointed it didn't last longer, but unlucky, Brian, anyway. Good luck for the rest of the games. Thanks a lot. Let's hear it for Cobra and for Brian. Never mind. Ah, but they will mind the fact that after five events, the Gladiators have held the contender scores down to 6-5 in Phil's favour. So all that remains is the Eliminator, but don't forget, at stake is a place in our semi-finals, so don't go away. Join us after the break here on Gladiators! Now, in the women's 
competition. Tracy is on 14 points. Janet's on 17 points. That's a three point difference, giving Janet a one and a half second head start. Over to you, Fash. Thanks, Ollie. Well, Tracy, one and a half seconds to make up. Can you do it? Well, you'll have to see at the end. <laughs> have you got enough in your legs? It's been a long day, hasn't it? it certainly has been a long day, yeah. I just try my best. It's all I can do. Okay. Janet, is that enough for you? One and a half seconds. I hope so. I really hope so. You'd have preferred more, though, wouldn't you? Oh, definitely, yes. Definitely. And can you do it? I hope I can. I'm just going to go out there and do my best. At stake is a place in the semi-finals, so there's a lot of pressure on. There is a lot of pressure, but I just hope I keep my head and just go for it. Good. Janet, Tracy, wish you both all the best. Tracy's daughter Kerry and partner Danny on the edges of their seats, and this for a place in the semi-finals, Janet Allen versus Tracy Fulford. Janet, you will go on my first whistle. Tracy, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, So, Janet, one. a 29-year-old Bristol-based sports development officer, last time out, finished the course in 1 minute 29, and Tracy, our 31-year-old mother of four from Gateshead, her last eliminator, timed at 1.17, so Tracy, easily the faster contender. And Danny urging Tracy up the rope, and it seems to have worked! Tracy almost level! Onto the testing overhead hand ladder, and Tracy will touch down first, and she sprints into the lead! We know she's faster over this course by 12 seconds, and that now beginning to tell. The energy sapping cargo nets. Tracy's mum and dad on their feet. Tracy to the top and stretching her lead. Janet's mum screaming. Here's Tracy on the zip. That lead becoming a yawning gap. Splashes down for a good landing. Next up will be the balance beam. Here comes Janet to join her. Tracy sprinting up the beam. Oh, she's going! She's going! No, no. She's gone! Oh, on the balance beam, and Danny knows it. Janet just to run up the travelator for a place in the semi-finals. Here she comes, an incredible turnabout. Janet Allen hits the top, and she'll grab the rope to swing into the semi-finals. And Rudolph's got a big hug for Faye there. Oh, here comes Tracy, her dream of bed turning into a horrible nightmare, which will haunt her for the rest of her days. Through the paper burst. Oh, down and out. But she gave it her all. Well, my goodness, Janet, that eliminator had absolutely everything. Blood, sweat and tears. It was so exciting. By the time you got to the cargo net, she'd caught you up. Yeah, she certainly did. She was very quick on that first part. Um, but I've done it again. <laughs> You've done it again. We'll see you back in a few weeks' time for our semi-finals. Janet Ellen, well done. Tracy, what happened? You made up the one and a half seconds. You were on your way to a place in the semi-finals. What happened? I've never fluffed anything so much in my life. I just lost my balance on the uh, balance beam. Was it lack of concentration? I think I knew it was because she was coming. And I thought, God, I caught her, I caught her. And that was it. It's a lot easier when you're following, isn't it, rather than being ahead? It sometimes can be the case, yeah. I would rather be ahead, though. Well, you were nearly there, so close. It's just, I just, thanks for everybody coming, that's all I can say. I've had loads of support from my family and my friends and everything. And I've really enjoyed it. And just thanks to everybody. Go over and say hello to all your supporters. Let's hear it for Tracy! So unlucky! And look at that smile from Janet as she's reunited with her family. The ecstasy and the agony. On Gladiators, it's either do or die. Well, despite the fact that our men were rather low scoring in this competition, it is going to be a very, very tight eliminator indeed. Phil's got a half-second head start. It's getting very serious now, Brian. At stake, a place in the semi-finals. Well, yes, an important place in the semi-finals. It'd be nice to have, and uh, he's going to have to work hard because I'm going to right behind him, and then I'm just going to take him right at the end. So you just keep shutting me on there. <laughs> now, Phil, you've been smiling throughout this. Are you feeling quite relaxed? It's what I've always wanted to do. I'm here. I plan to do all I can. And you're going to do it, probably. See you both at the very end. Best of luck to the both of you. Good luck. So, Ollie thinks he might do it, but Brian's wife and dad may disagree. Brian Richardson versus Phil Ennis. Phil, you will go on my first whistle. Brian, you will go on my second whistle. Three. Two, one. They're off 
and running. Oh, and Phil falters at the first fence. Brian immediately neck and neck. Brian has done this in one minute, six seconds. Phil in 135. Brian 29 seconds quicker over this course as they hit the top of the rope. Julie giving it plenty, and so are the guys. The grueling handbike designed to sap the strength from the arms. And Phil has pedaled himself back into the lead. Brian struggling, and Julie won't like that. Told you. Still on the cargo nets, climbing well. Brian not having much luck with nets on this show. Snagged himself on pendulum, but climbing calmly. As Phil hits the top first, with his entire family on their feet. Phil on the zip, 25 miles an hour, splash down. Here comes Brian, can't claw back the time he lost on the handbike. Phil on the beam, supremely confident. Only a travelator away for a place in the semi-finals of Gladiators. Here he comes, composes, and pumps up the travelator. Oh, he's losing it! He's lost it, he's blown it, here comes Brian! Oh, I don't believe it, he's let it slip through his fingers! What a nail-biter! Who's going to compose themselves first? It's Phil, he's away! Oh, he's blown it! And his family can't bear to look at this, and nor can I! Who's going to go first this time? He's a flattened Brian up there. Oh, it seems to have worked. Brian's away first. And he's pumping up the Travelator. He's going to do it first. Phil claws his way, but it's Brian. Through the paper first and into the Chevy finals. What a heart stopper. And at last, Julie's happy. Brian, I don't know how you did oh. that. Fantastic stuff. Talk us through that slowly. Slowly. That's probably the word there. I thought the thing was going in slow motion. Oh, my legs were jelly. Did you think you could get up there? Did somebody speed that travelator up or what? Oh, yes, we always oh. do that. Nightmare. I don't have to, don't, tell me I don't have to face those big blokes again. Oh, you've got to do it all again. You've got to do it all again. But the good news is there's a little bit more light at the end of the tunnel. There is. Um, uh, another, another show. Well done. Is it for Brian? Somebody always has to leave us. I don't know how many times my heart stopped during that eliminator. What was going through your mind when you were standing at the bottom of the travelator? You can't get enough rest to get up there. You're just out of it. The longer you wait, the more you want to go, and the more you want to go is the more you need. You know you need to rest. But well done to Brian. We've been neck and neck, even Stevens. The worst thing about this is, of course, that you will be leaving us. The best thing about it is you're still smiling. Phil Ennis, ladies and gentlemen. And Phil relieved it's all over. And behind every great man, there's a great woman. And let's face it, what a great team. And Phil's going to be there a while. He's got 11 children to console. What a super dad. They certainly don't, and I know you all enjoyed that at home. You can always join us next week for another quarter-final. See us here on The Gladiators. Oh, for safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. Tuck your darts in your top pocket and step up to the hockey. You can't beat a bit of bully. Next, here on Challenge, Bullseye is on the way. And tonight at 9, a different type of game show bully, the brainiac kind, face the chaser head on.